So fluids in motion. Um, first topic to learn with fluids in motion is flow rate. Now what is rate? When you talk about rate, rate is anything per time. You know, it could be per second, per minute, per hour. Um, rate is anything per time. So when we say flow rate, the, the basic definition of flow rate is volume per time. Now what, do we, what would we measure volume in in physics? Volume gets measured in met, metric unit for volume? Cubic meter. You know, volume is length times length times length. So that gives us cubic meter. Uh, time is measured in seconds. So cubic meter per second is the unit. Now in everyday life, outside this room, you would probably measure flow rate in gallons per second or perhaps gallons per minute. You know, so let's say you go to Home Depot and you get one of those Homer buckets. It's a five gallon bucket. So if you have a five gallon bucket and you get your hose out and you start filling it up, so water starts going into the five gallon bucket, what if it takes uh, 40 seconds to fill up that five gallon bucket? Could you figure out your flow rate? Yeah, you'd be like, all right, the, the volume was five gallons and then the time was 40 seconds. So whatever that works out to be, gallons per second. That'd be a flow rate, you know. But in physics, in physics, we want cubic meters per second. Now, something that's really cool, you're going to find this amazing. If you have fluid flowing through a pipe or a hose, so check this out. I'm going to show you, like, here's a cross-sectional diagram of a hose, okay, where the cross-sectional area is A. So you guys got your brain around this? So you got a hose. You're looking at the cross-sectional area. If you take that cross-sectional area of the hose and multiply by the velocity of the fluid inside the hose, look what you get. So if you take area, so what would area get measured in? Meter squared. Area would be meter squared. Multiply that by the velocity of the fluid. Look what you get. What, is that, what does this simplify to? Cubic meter per second, which is flow rate, right? Volume per time. You take the area of the hose multiplied by the fluid speed, that's flow rate. Now, the most common way you're going to see this in a homework problem or on a test, so we have two equations for flow rate, right? So that means that this and this must be equal. So you're going to go volume per time must equal A times velocity, right? So how many parts are there to this equation? Four. You'll be given three. You know, like the problem, let's say it gives you the volume, the area, the cross-sectional area of the pipe, and the fluid speed. So if you knew those three things, what could you solve for? The time, right? That's how those problems are going to go. All right, that's flow rate. Now let's look at an application of flow rate. Here's an application of flow rate. So you're all familiar with this. You know, it's a Saturday afternoon. You're out in your yard. You got the hose going. Water's coming out of the hose. And you want to squirt your little brother or sister with water. But the, hose wa the water coming out of the hose isn't going far enough. So what do you do? You put your thumb over the end of the hose. You stick your, your thumb over the end. And what does that cause the water to do? Speed up. It causes the water to go faster. You're basically making the, uh, the area of the hose opening smaller, which increases the fluid speed. Now, why is that? What's the explanation? It's real simple. So here we have a, a pipe that goes from fat to skinny. Uh, big cro big cross-sectional area to small cross-sectional area. Now, the thing to realize, this has to do with flow rate. So for fluids moving through a closed pipe, the flow rate remains constant. So let's just say that in the fat part, we have a flow rate of two gallons per minute. That'd be a flow rate, volume per time. So what does that mean? Two gallons per minute, that means passing this point here, every minute we have two gallons of fluid going past. Well, if that's the flow rate in the fat part, what must be the flow rate over here in the skinny part? It, it's gotta be the same, otherwise, you know, otherwise there's a leak 
or something, you know. The, the volume per second or per minute passing the fat part has to be equal to the volume per minute or second passing the skinny part. Does that make sense? So what we're saying is this. The flow rate in region 1 must be equal to the flow rate in region 2. Now one, one of the equations for flow rate that we did like 10 seconds ago was A times V. So you plug that in there, plug that in there, you get A1V1 equals A2V2. So look, region 1, big area or small area? Big. So arrow up means big. The velocity in region 1, small. So then you go to region 2, what happens to the area? Area, small, velocity, big. You guys get it? A1V1 equals A2V2. Same idea with, you know, when you come back from winter break, we're going to be doing gas laws. P1, V1 equals P2, V2. Like, you know, if you increase the pressure on a balloon, if you increase the pressure on a balloon, what happens to the volume? It goes down. Okay. All right. Does this make sense? All right. Moving on. Bernoulli's law. You're going to like this. Okay. Final thing for the day. And then we're going to do a homework problem. So, and then uh, our next lecture on Monday is going to be on the Bernoulli equation. There's an equation for this topic, but we won't talk about it today. So for today, I just want you to know that Bernoulli's law says faster moving fluids exert less pressure, which I know is kind of counterintuitive. I've been teaching this long enough where kids are like, it seems like faster moving fluids should exert higher pressure. Would you guys agree with that? Yeah, it kind of thins out the, the, uh, the medium. Um, okay, so, so, but faster moving fluids exert less pressure. Now, here are some examples. How many of you have a chimney in your house? Chimney in your house. Now, is this noise on, on a windy night, is this noise familiar? And I don't want to scare anybody because it's really spooky, the noise I'm about to make. You scared? Okay. <laughs> how many of you heard that noise? It's your chimney. So how, why does that noise happen? It's Bernoulli. So the reason it happens is you have you have a, it's a windy night, right? So you got you got air blowing past the top of your chimney. The wind is blowing past. Now let's look inside this person's house. We're gonna look like this. What's happening to the air inside the house? Is it moving or not moving? It's not moving, so we'll just call that slow. The air in the house is moving around slow. The air right outside the chimney is moving fast. So what does Bernoulli's law say? Faster moving fluids exert less pressure. So outside the house you have low pressure. Inside the house is high pressure. So this pulls air which way? Up the chimney or down the chimney? Up the chimney. Because fluids move from high pressure to low pressure. Air gets sucked up the chimney. And then your chimney acts like a flute. You get it? Okay. The more common example, like if your mom or dad is a super science person, go home and challenge them with Bernoulli's law. Say, Mom, Dad, what do you think of when I say Bernoulli? Now, what will most science people say? Airplanes. The, no, the number one thing that people think of when you say Bernoulli is airplane wings. Now, why is that? So airplane wings are shaped like this. Airplane wings are flat on the bottom, curved on the top. So when air hits the wing, so here's the wing, here's the airplane wing. When air hits the wing, some of the air goes across the bottom, some of the air goes across the top. And they both have to get across in the same time. Otherwise, it wouldn't make any sense. You know? Otherwise, you'd have air piling up, waiting to go. Uh, you know? <laughs> the air must go like this. It has to go across, and the top and the bottom have to get across in the same time. 
but the top is a farther distance. So which path must be traveling faster? The top. So you have fast air up top, slow air on the bottom. So what does Bernoulli's law say? Faster moving fluids exert what? Less pressure. So we end up with having high pressure under the wing, low pressure on top of the wing. What does this create? Lift force. Okay. Now, that's not my favorite. My favorite demo for Bernoulli's law, and then we're done. We're gonna, then we'll look at a homework problem. Is the old funnel with a ball. Okay, and show this to your friends. You'll be like, you make the most popular kid on your street. You show, you pull this out. Like, hey everybody, come over here. Check out my funnel and my ball. So here's what you do. You put the ball in the funnel. Okay, and the demo goes like this. No matter how hard you blow, you cannot blow the ball out of the funnel. It is impossible, says who? Bernoulli. Watch. So I'm gonna, if you want to try this, you can. Or you, dude, you could even hook this funnel up to an air compressor and it will not blow out. Watch. <sighs> you can't blow the ball out. Let me show you why. So here's the funnel, the old funnel and ping pong ball. So here's the funnel. You put the ball in the funnel like this. There's the ball. So the air comes through, right? So the air goes around the ball like that, all around, three dimensionally. Okay. Now what's happening underneath the ball? Fast air or slow air? Fast. What's happening above the ball? Slow. What does Bernoulli's law say? Faster moving fluids exert what? Less pressure. So we have low pressure, high pressure. The ball cannot get out of the funnel. Okay. Now, on Monday, I'm going to teach you guys the Bernoulli equation. It's the longest equation of the year. It's this. You ready for this? P1 plus 1 half dV1 squared plus dGH1 equals P2 plus 1 half dV2 squared plus dGH2. It looks gnarly, but if you think about it, the left side of the equation and the right side of the equation are the same. We'll do that on Monday, okay? All right, so let's pick a homework problem.